Ah, ah, ah. What's going on, Uncle Force? Welcome back to the Watch It with McQueen Gentlemen. Yes, sir, we are back, man. I hope you guys are having an excellent day. Today is Saturday, and yes, we are still here uploading, okay? We have been working. We've been working, man. Now listen to me, Uncle Force. We have a video here today. Uh, in the past, we've reacted to all the drama that's surrounding uh, Dylan Dennis and Logan Paul. You know, it seems like everything that I've seen up until this point just shows that Logan Paul is going to get his ass beat. Absolutely destroyed. Pause. Okay? Now, with all that being said, we also never know what's actually going to take place once the boxing match starts. That's just how boxing is. That's just how fighting is in general, all right? It's been a lot of upsets in the past. So, with all that being said, we're going to go ahead and watch this video right here. And it's Dylan Dennis saying that he's going to break Logan Paul's face. These are bold claims. But nothing compared to what has already been said. So it's not really too surprising, yet entertaining. So, let's go ahead and watch it right now. We have it right here. He says, I'm going to break his face. Dylan Dennis goes off on Logan Paul. Let's get into it. My name's Dylan Dennis. I'm 30 years old. I'm a four-time Jiu-Jitsu World Champion. Amongst Pan Ams and other titles. But yeah, Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt since I was uh, 21. Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt since he was 21? He's been whooping ass for a while. That's great. See, I... I'm about to get into fighting, man. I'm trying to tell you, I'm gonna do boxing. You guys think I'm playing? Watch when McQueen adds boxing to his repertoire. I will be absolutely dangerous. I got to a street fight as a kid, and then he was very popular, so all the kids in the school tried to jump me, so I had to learn how to fight. So I started doing jiu-jitsu, and I never stopped. It's a good testimony. I challenged myself, um, obviously money. I mean, not that I need money, but obviously it's a good payday. Um, I don't like Logan Paul, I don't like the ball, so I want to break his face, obviously. Damn! You know what? You know how much confidence you have to have in your fighting skills to genuinely say something as bold as that. I want to break your face. Oh, McQueen, I can sit there and say that. Okay, but listen, you don't know how to fight. That's the difference. All right? You can't just say that with all of your confidence in your spirit and your bones because you know that you have more combat experience than the other person. You can't say that. You can say it, but it's the confidence that makes it threatening. Very bold statement. Watch, watch when McQueen adds boxing to his repertoire. I'm just going to be saying it just to say it because I know probably what, maybe 90% of people on the street don't have any combat experience, have never fought, never ever taken any classes. So really, you could beat up the majority of people once you get some good, solid boxing kills, because nobody wants to go in there and get beat up to learn how to box or how to fight in any way in any martial art. But I will. And uh, not many jiu-jitsu guys would do boxing, so I think it's pretty cool. Like Bruce Lee, shit, you know? Any martial art, anytime, anywhere, so. Okay, I like that. It would have to be either the Pauls or Nate Diaz or someone like that. It ha yeah, I, I wouldn't just fight anybody, because I just do MMA, you know? How did the beef between start between you and the Paul brothers? Oh, it's just so long. But yeah, it's been on for years. Um, I was the first person that Jake called out in boxing. And it's just been years and years of just going back and forth. Okay. I think he's egotistical. I think that he likes yes men around him. If you don't follow his rules and say he's the best, I think he cuts you out of his crew. Yep. I think that's very obvious. I think it's very obvious. I've seen that too, man. I've seen that too. He has a lot of yes men around him. And honestly, one thing I don't understand about people like that is how could you be comfortable with someone, with, with so, much, so many people around you just literally glazing you constantly? You know what I'm saying? Just sucking you off and telling you that, yes, master, yeah, you're right of everything. Everything you say is just correct. No one is incorrect in your presence, sir. How could that not piss you off? Honestly, that pussy ass energy would absolutely infuriate me for real because i genuinely have always been like this and i am more like this now than ever because i've had a few incidents in the recent past where this is there are examples of what i'm about to say and what i'm about to say is when you have people out here okay that aren't telling you the, the straight up truth that means one they don't have your best interests and when you don't have your best interests you're a snake and I don't want snakes around me. Because if someone is too scared to tell you the truth because they're afraid that they'll lose their position or their friendship or the benefits they may be gaining from your friendship, then that person isn't actually there for you. Now, this is common sense, right? But you would, you would you be so surprised at how uncommon it is for people to think this way. I cannot stand people like that. I hate people who sugarcoat stuff. I can't stand people like that. Like, I just, that is, the, to me, this is the worst type of people. Okay? Tell me the truth, even if it hurts me. 
because that shows me that you care more about me than your position in our friendship. It's shown before, you know, his friend said he, he, he believed in Jesus and he thinks that he should, you know, do this and that. He kicked him out of his crew. Yeah, that was um, crazy. I think that he thinks he's on a pedestal that he's not really on because of the money and how long he's been famous. And I just think that he's full of himself. Just his mannerisms, being around him, the, the lawsuits, the the way he talks. I don't know. I, I thought he was in the beginning, but just, I don't know. It's hard. When you, you just know when you meet someone, you know, like, you know they're a good person or not. And then, there's not one person who's ever met me that said I'm a bad person, but I just know, like, just talking to him, he's just a scumbag, you know? And the way he treats his family, the way he treats his brother, you just tell that he's not a, a good guy. Fair points. I didn't go after her. I was just airing out public information, and I didn't realize that people were going to latch onto it so much, and then there was just so much of it that people were like, you know, you can't deny the truth, you know? He's trying to deny the truth by suing me and trying to silence me like a Karen. Like a, like a yeah, that's crazy. You can't sit there and talk all that crazy stuff, okay, and then try and size him like a, like a weenie, a weenie head junior, because you losing the promotion fight here, okay? You're losing the fight before the actual fight. He's getting in your mind, woo, all right? That's the problem here. And I think that shows a lot more about Logan Paul's, you know, attitude and his personality and his resilience and who he really is on the inside. Because this really kind of stacks up to what, what Dylan is saying here about how he is as a person. You know, you can't sit there and just give out all that stuff, negative stuff that you put out into the, into the universe and then get mad when someone brings you back at you tenfold. You don't get to decide that. I actually despise people like that. If you sock somebody in the face, you can't get mad if they pull out a flamethrower and burn your ass. Because you incited that behavior. You don't get to choose how heavy it comes back to you. I mean, listen, man, like at the end of the day, I respect Logan because he's obviously very successful. But in terms of his character, he just doesn't seem like a good dude, you know, from what I'm seeing. Those are just my observations. You know, he should handle it with me in the ring or handle with me in the streets, not with the law, you know? No one respects someone that goes to the law. Definitely the lawsuits, um, all the back and forth. But, you know, it's not a personal, it's just business. So I go in with that mindset. Okay. I would submit him in under 30 seconds. Yeah, that's a fact. He's one of my best friends, training partners, mentors, very good friend, you know? He's always been there for me and I've always been there for him. We have a great relationship and uh, I can sit him one of my best friends. I think it's a little bit different because Connor's a striker and I'm a grappler. Yeah, I don't know. It didn't really show me too much. I think just Floyd just kind of waited, 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 knowing that Connor is a power puncher. So maybe I'll take my time more. I don't know. It didn't really show me much because me and Connor has such different styles. So it's, it's very different, you know? Yeah, probably be in the NBA. Yeah, NBA. Well, I always said, like, if I ever, like, mess up my knees or lose my athleticism much, probably go to the NFL. So. What? What is he? Wait, what? Probably be in the NBA. He's in the NBA? Is that what he said? The brother can't be serious, is he? Yeah, NBA. Well, I always said, like, if I ever, like, mess up my knees or lose my athleticism much, I'd probably go to the NFL, so. Prince the seam. Prince the seam. Yes. No. Nah. That's all I got to say. The legend. Prince of Seam is a great boxer. If you guys don't know, watch his highlights. That dude was crazy before he got knocked out. Very great fight. Very entertaining to watch. You guys should go watch Prince of Seam. That dude was crazy. He's fat now, but he was a great boxer. It made me more protective. It made me more appreciate life. Something else to fight for. When those extra rounds get hard. You know, you think about something else. You think about something greater than you. Being a good role model. Living, you know, leaving a legacy for him to watch and just tons of stuff. It changes you for everything basically i think that they respect that i haven't changed i'm still the bad guy but you know i wear it on my chest i'm not like him i'm not trying to fake it and be this good guy or whatever i haven't changed i think people respect that you know i'm not trying to hide anything i am who i am i think maybe the fans coming on my side and rooting for me and everybody's kind of seeing and like me exposing him for who he is. It's nice to have the fans' reaction and, and see how much of a scam artist he is and how much of a he is. Um, but all of it's been fun. I like the build up to the fight, you know? I wish I had a better dancing partner, but it is what it is. I'll do it all by myself. <laughs> I love to talk, man. I love to talk. Listen to me. I, I feel like when you are the opposition to any of the, of the Paul family, I feel like... That already makes the public wanted. Whether they disagree with who you were before you were deciding to fight one of the Paul brothers, 
Now, automatically, by association, they want you to beat a Logan Paul's or a, a Paul Brothers ass. They want you to. Just because you are fighting them, they don't care what happened before that. Now everyone is all more on your side. They're, they're cheering you on because they want to see these blonde dudes get knocked out. And I think that's going to work out well for him, you know? But hopefully he doesn't let it get to his head because, you know, at the, same, at the same time, you know, it is boxing. It is fighting. It only takes one punch and a lot of upsets in the past. I see him quitting. I think, I'm, I think he's going to give up on the stool. Everything. Yeah, everything. I see him quitting on the stool. His coach is throwing in the towel. Or a vicious KO. Or TKO. Or me choking him unconscious. So we'll see. I have a lot of ways to win. No, I, like I said, I, I, if I if I was to bet, I would put my money on Dylan Dennis. I just hope that, you know, because I've seen a lot of fighters in the past that have done MMA. And then they get in the boxing ring and it's like, they don't look like they've ever thrown a punch in their entire life. And it's just annoying because it's like, okay, I understand it's two different styles of fighting. The only person I've seen that has got in the ring that actually looked like an experienced boxer or fighter in general was Anderson Silva when he fought Jake Paul. You know, what I mean? you know, it was just like when you could just tell the fighting experience was there, even though he's not originally a boxer. So it's just like I don't know, man. I I really just hope that it translates. Is what I'm trying to say. I hope that his fighting experience translates in the actual boxing ring because it would be great to see Logan Paul get his ass whooped. It really would. But anywho. What you guys think, man? Let me know in the comment section. I love you guys. Make sure you guys hit the like button. Make sure you guys subscribe. I will see y'all next video.